The 20th century witnessed the immigration of nearly 50 Chaldean families to the eastern United States, some for the purpose of education, others in pursuit of safety and a better life. These early pioneers primarily settled in Chicago. It was there, beginning in 1904, that the very first Chaldean community in America would be founded. It was a small mission, serving about 400 families, which would officially become St. Ephraim Parish. Soon after, Chaldeans began arriving in Detroit. On 1948, the first priest, Father Thomas B. Dawid, arrived in Detroit. On that time, the Chaldeans in Detroit were only 75 families. Now, they are maybe more than 175,000 Chaldeans. The growth of the Chaldean community, first and foremost, is because of Jesus Christ. You know, if we didn't have the faith, the churches, the Eucharist, and if there isn't Christ in the middle of all this, and I'll say this, if we did not establish Mother of God in 1948, I don't think we would have a big community as we have today. We've had amazing leadership. Uh, we really have to give credit to Bishop Ibrahim for just kind of bringing us from zero to now um, a church that's, that we have, you know, 10, 11 parishes and priests and seminarians, and he did an amazing job. God took us from Iraq and put us in Michigan for a reason, and we're continuously building a new, new home here, really. So I, I genuinely think that's why we've reached 40 years. When Jesus instructed the apostles to go forth and spread the word of his gospel, St. Thomas, along with his disciples, Marade and Marmari, brought the teachings of Christ east to the people of Mesopotamia. It was this first seed planted by God and through the blood of our martyrs that bore the fruits we see today. God continues to guide us as we venture west through the works and testimony of our priests, religious, and lay people. The future of the community is, once again, where we go. We're in Baghdad, we get to Arabic, we're in America, we're English. We always kind of try to serve the community, especially in different languages. But I always felt called to be a Chaldean priest because of my forefathers for generation and generation and generation handing on the faith. I had the faith because of them. So I almost owe it to them and my community, which kept the faith alive in this diocese, in this community, to serve them as their priests. And it's, it's been the honor of my life. The church without the laity is not a church. The church without the laity being active is not a very full functioning church. Uh, keep this in mind, the Chaldeans that were already present in Detroit when the first priest came, he doesn't speak English. They're his hands, they're his feet, they're his eyes, they're his ears, you know, uh, they're his tongue. They're, they're the ones that are going to be able to speak with the Archbishop of Detroit, the Cardinal Archbishop, you know. Um, and then as the church begins to grow, then you're going to need some who will need to know the faith well enough to teach. I was formed by lay people and I started at a very young age. I remember I was in the eighth grade and I was taking theology classes at ECRC and going to the different youth groups uh, and the Bible studies and the different things that were going on because of the lay people. So I wouldn't be a priest if it wasn't for the lay people and for their work. Uh, lay people are so important and I don't know if, if they really know that, um, but informing the church is like being able to be open the way, the way the Spirit is guiding them, like youth groups and retreats and pulling community together. You see like parish councils, the way that they're working too. Choir is like these lay people are ministering to the people of God and it's amazing. They're necessary. So the laity have a huge role to play in the church. I mean, the leadership of the church is obviously the priests, but they play an integral role in, in the teaching of the church and obviously the financial and the structural part of the church. They're the one who bring the families. The, the stability of the Christian family is truly the stability of the Christian church. So strong families build strong churches. As priests, we come from strong families. So we're just coming from the community to serve the community because we are all part of the, the larger community. We all make up the body of Christ. God calls all of us personally by name. The Lord's words, you go into my vineyard too, is especially addressed to each and every one of us. We all have that calling, right, to go out and to evangelize. Jesus tells it in Matthew uh, 
you know, chapter 28, 19, to go out and preach the gospel. So I think we all have that calling, but some of us have a calling to be subdeacons, some of us have a calling to be lectors or to be in the choir or, or ushers or whatever our calling is. Maryam, ya imam litha haninutha للموسيقى هي دور مؤثر وفعال بصلواتنا وبتراتينا قديس أغسطينوس يقول من رتل فصلى مرتين فإحنا من دن نصلي ونسويها مع الموسيقى نوصل هاي الصلاة بتضرعاتنا للناس ويكون لها تأثير أكيد مع الموسيقى فهو غذاء روحي أشوفه إذا كانوا معا I started when I was 12 years old and I can't stop it's a, a calling, I feel, just like a priest has a calling. It's a calling to me. It's a huge commitment. As God has guided and protected us over the past 40 years, let us venture into the next 40 years with faith and vigilance to honor the mission entrusted to us. What we can do to ensure that Christ is the center of the community, I think, starts in the family. It starts in the home. So it needs to be parents that are like rightly catechized, um, that are growing in their faith so they can pass the faith on to their children. Christ wants us to continue to grow. If you don't taste Christ, you can't give Christ, or else Christ just becomes a thing that you do, and he becomes just a tradition. And if Jesus is not part of tradition, then we lost Jesus. But Jesus isn't a tradition. There's a difference. Jesus is a person. And the more that we can taste, see, feel, hear, um, join love, uh, the more that you want to share the good news. So the history of the church always goes back to the root of what our faith comes from, which is the sacraments and the scriptures. So I think if we can keep the focus on that, and everything we do in the church, the catechism, the achowia, the even the liturgies we have, like the Ramsha and Sapra, the youth groups, all the outspurts of ministries that we have are fundamentally important that always point back to the heart of Jesus, to the scriptures, and to the sacraments. I think if we always keep that as our core and always go back to that and always bring people back to the sacraments, especially the Eucharist, especially for, for confession, then, then the mercy of God and the love of God and the physical presence of Jesus in the Eucharist will be our life source for generations to come. You know, everything you do in your homes should make decisions with Christ. You take Christ with you to work, you take Christ you know, with you to school, you take Christ not just here for your, at church for an hour. When you leave, you leave Christ in the church. No, you just received his body, blood, soul, and divinity. Take him with you, take him to the world. When you leave out the church doors, let people know. There's a saying which I actually got from Father Pierre, if the babies are not crying, then the church is dying. I think with the Bible studies, with the formation classes, with the J2S and our crew, and this is what's keeping our church alive. It's what's keeping our church thriving. It's what keeping these kids, giving them somewhere to go, giving them something to do instead of going out and doing something else that we don't want them to do. شوف الجيل الجديد لازم يكون بمركز اهتمام كبير جدا. وهذا الاهتمام ما يجي من الأبرشية فقط، وإنما من العائلة والأبرشية. فلازم لازم نركز على انه نعلم الاجيال القادمه او الجيل الصغير على يسوع المسيح. Come to church, you know, make the church your home. Make sure your children know that the church is their home, that it's their place where they can be comfortable, that they can come to and speak to the Lord and pray and learn and just be proud. The priest can't do it on their own. Bishop can't do it on his own. Um, us lay people can't do it on our own. So <clears throat> the Holy Spirit works in a collaboration with everybody, working together, united, to be able to preach the gospel. God got us. He's like got us. He's not letting go of us anytime soon. And our community is growing now, and the next 40 years will continue to grow and hopefully branch out into so many different things. After 40 years, we grateful to God for all the blessing He granted to the Chaldean community either in East or in West of the United States. Today, more than ever, in this third millennium, we hear more strongly the command of Christ. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to the whole creation. We, the children of God, are called by the Lord to a challenging yet glorious mission. That is, 
to make Christ known to all of us. To make Christ known to all. 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 Make Christ known to all. to make Christ known to all.